Hello, this is Deborah Carmona, and I am in my stamping corner, a corner that's actually in my master bedroom. I have to have creative spaces in my house. I have a sewing center, which is in the guest room. I have a computer desk, which is kind of sandwiched between the living room and the dining room. I have my card making station and my scrapbooking station right here in the corner of my bedroom. I have a very large bedroom, so I kind of taken over this space. I actually had to get a smaller dresser to give me a little bit more space in this corner. First I started with just one wall, now I've kind of expanded around the corner. I make cards because I like to make cards. I like to work with paper. I did scrapbooks for each of my children. I chronologue their life from birth to graduation from high school and I created them a book which I gave them to them when they got married. And so I've been a collector of paper and working with paper for many years. Well now my family has grown. My six children are grown, five of them are married, and I have t 11, 12, if you count the one on the way, grandchildren. So that's a lot of birthdays and that's a lot of anniversaries. Matter of fact, my calendar is very full. I have events in every single month. I keep a list on my bulletin board uh, by the month and in order of the date. And I even have the year listed of when somebody was born or when they got married so that I can know how old they are or so I can know how many years they're celebrating their anniversary. And so I try to keep up with everybody's birthdays and anniversaries. And so I make cards for that purpose. I am an artist, I'm a creator, I'm a crafter. So I really love card making. What is the purpose of my, my video today? I, I watched a video of a lady who was a Stampin' Up! consultant, I guess that's what they're called, uh, representative, whatever. Uh, she has been in the business for I don't know how many years. She was uh, quitting Stampin' Up! And that's, the, it was the title that caused me to want to watch her video why she was leaving Stampin' Up! Oh, I buy a lot of Stampin' Up! products. Um, not as much as I used to, but I have bought a lot of Stampin' Up! products. I like to be encouraging and uplifting and helpful. And if there's a problem, there's got to be a solution. You know, when you're with a company for a while, you, you notice things change. Um, almost every company goes through changes. Sometimes those changes are good. Sometimes those changes are costly. <laughs> and sometimes you wonder, why do they keep changing things? Okay, so I have a lot of the old equipment and I use the old equipment and I'm a bargain shopper. I like to save a dollar every way I can. And that's one of the reasons why I make my own cards, rather than having to go to the store and buy a card all the time. And I like looking on YouTube for other creative ideas. I like to expand my cards. I don't want to send the same card every year. I want to send new cards. But I don't want to have to buy new material. So in this video, I'm going to deal with some of the issues and problems that people have. And to, sh to tell you, you don't have to buy the latest, coolest, newest thing. You can work with what you have. And that's what the subject of this video is. Work with what you have. And it's okay to go to Amazon or the clearance rack at Hobby Lobby. It's okay to shop in different places. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get into card making. You don't, it can be costly initially. I, I'm sure, I haven't added it up, but I'm sure I've spent hundreds of dollars on buying equipment to get me set up. And sometimes there'll be people that are getting out of the business that want to sell their stock because they don't, they got more than they need or, or because they are a consultant with Stampin' Up! They got to have the newest, greatest thing. Well, I don't care that a stamp that I'm going to use in my card is five years old. It doesn't matter to me. What matters is the end product that I create. I'm going to share with you how you can make the most of what you have. So one day I was carousing on YouTube, which is one of my favorite places to, to learn things. I was um, looking for inspiring ideas for card making. Everybody was making this pop-up card and 
they were doing it with butterflies. And I said, well, that card looks really fun and it looks really easy, but I don't have the butterflies. So why couldn't you do it with flowers? So I started looking through my papers that I already had. I think I probably bought these when they were on a clearance, this paper when I was on a clearance rack. This came in the same set. And I had this rose and I said, is this a nice big flower? And I had already had the leaves cut out because I, I like to cut things out in bulk. And so I created this pop-up card, which I think is pretty cool. And and I thought the flowers worked really good to, um, to go in there. And I said, you know what? I bet you could do other things. You don't have to do butterflies. I am into card making. And I saw that they were making these lovely pop-up cards. I would like to have the new butterfly collection that Stampin' Up! has. But frankly, it's a bit expensive and I really can't afford it right now. I'm going to work with what I have. I have these and I got this um, from somebody else. So I got it probably for a dollar and it was just old stock uh, from a, a Stampin' Up! Uh, representative that they have they clean out their stock. They like to keep everything current and new. Um, these are a little small for what I wanted. And I did get this. I believe I got this one off a of clearance rack. Now I don't have a stamp that goes with it, but I do have the die cut. And that is about the size that I would like my butterfly to be. So I'm going to work with what I have and make it work. I'm choosing a light yellow. Oops, I better put it on the right way. I'm choosing a light yellow because I can color on top of it. I am an artist so I can make things work even if I don't have the latest and greatest tools. And I don't think you have to go to the expense of having the greatest latest tools. If you have a little bit of creativity and some artistic skills, you can do just about anything. So I'm going to turn this into a butterfly with details. Um, I have this pen that has a small tip on one end and a brush tip on the other end. And I can use this and it is the color black, basic black, even though these tips look kind of grayish but it'll do for my purposes. We have two little eyes. Yeah, I need to zoom in closer. Well, great. I wasn't even recording. Well, now I'm recording. Let me go back and explain what I did. Okay, I used my fat tip, my brush tip, and I went around the edges and created these little indents okay then I switched to my fine tip to draw in the lines and I'm going to start up here I'm going to stay on this paper because I don't want to write on my cardstock my tabletop is actually glass because gla glass is a really good thing to clean up any glue. I just use a straight edge razor blade, but when trying to record with glass, you have all these reflections. So I had to put down a piece of cardstock, but I accidentally put a mark on it and I don't want to mess up my paper. So I am using this little scrap paper so that I will put marks on that instead. Okay, so I have the basic start of the butterfly. Now I can add some more details. Sometimes a butterfly will have a rounded thing like that. Okay, usually it's at the top. Sometimes a butterfly will have um, stripes. I'm just going to add some stripes. Just short little 
This is beginning to look like a monarch butterfly, but it doesn't have the swallow tails on it. Enough. Um, I'm going to switch back to the small tip. And sometimes there's an extra row of lines. Really, it's just look making patterns. Okay. Guess we should do that to the top too. You can do, really design the butterfly any way you want. A good thing to do would be to look up butterfly pictures on Google and seeing what some designs are. And you don't have to copy it exactly. I'm just going to add a few dots just to... Sometimes if you examine a butterfly, it looks like the colors are kind of dotted on. And see, I'll be able to come in and add some other colors. Now you have to keep in mind the colors that you can color on top of yellow. If you color blue, it's going to turn green. So you might not want to put blue on it. But you could definitely use reds and oranges on top of yellow. So choosing whatever color butterfly that you cut out, choosing the color, you have to think about what color you want your butterfly to be. If you want a purple butterfly, you're not going to cut it out with yellow paper you're going to be using purple. You can put blues on purples. Now, I started, got into card making because I have a big family. I have 12 grandchildren. I have six kids. Well, almost 12. Well, yeah, I got 12 grandchildren. One's in the oven. Expected in the month of, I think, May. There. I just try to fill in the corners just a little bit. Just so it gradually gets darker on the corners. Alright, now I can definitely use orange on top of yellow. Let's see. I think I'm going to choose a lighter orange. And I want to add a little bit more dimension. So just with some light strokes. I'm going to sort of like shadows. And I suppose there would be a shadow on one side. I'm just going to make the left side the more shadowy side. That way it's a little bit more three dimensional. And what else? Up some yellow just to make it a little bit darker and add some dimensions. I'll just do some streaks. A little yet lighter yellow. I'm starting to get a collection of markers here. I'm developing this butterfly. See? And I didn't even have a stamp to do this. Oh, sure, it'll take a little bit more time, but I'm not a professional card maker. I'm not a Stampin' Up! Uh, representative. What matters is that I'm making cards for my family, and I like to make personalized cards for them to enjoy. Just maybe a few textural lines. Actually, let's get... Um, use a light orange with a thin line just add some textural fine lines because like that's not not really working very good these lines are very fine okay well I think that's pretty good so there I created a butterfly just out of a shape and I didn't even have a stamp so you don't, this just goes to show, you don't have to have the latest and greatest things to be able to create something beautiful. But I did create a butterfly card. Um, 
This paper came out of the same pack as this other paper. And this is a butterfly that I created just like this that I showed you how to make. See, I, I didn't do them exactly the same. It's just plain cut out and I did not have a stamp. Now these here are from my set of small stamps. This right here that I bought off of a clearance rack um, because it used to belong to somebody else. I don't know what the R stands for but I know that I I bought this probably for a dollar and I like I like to save money. And so I combined the butterflies stamps to create this little card and I even put some butterfly inside and here and oh okay let me while, while where is that thing I want to talk about something it's not I'm not trying to put Stampin' Up down but sometimes the little gadgets that you buy and I think I got this off of Stampin' Up maybe not oh yep I did it is Stampin' Up. I've seen people use this and they could put, throw the, together the cards really fast. But you know what? Look, it didn't hold. I will go back to my standard glue, which is going to work for me a whole lot better. So here's a product I'm really disappointed in. So you see, sometimes the latest, greatest gadgets are not so wonderful. Oh yeah, you, you, they work really fast because you just put it on and roll it. But I have been so disappointed. My cards have fallen apart. So I like to use my glue. Tacky glue. Well, sometimes, but that one's a turbo. Sometimes I just use the original tacky glue. Okay, so I decided to add a butterfly here. And I haven't figured out who this card is for. Or what is this going to be a birthday? Is it going to be a get well, a cheer up card? I don't know what this is for. So I don't, I haven't put a message in it yet. But I have plenty of room to put a message when that time comes. And so I thought that looked pretty good. But then I did some experimenting. I had this flower made, but it wasn't quite big enough, and I wanted it to be a little bigger, so I, I used the doily cut from this set, a uh, spot of tea framelits, to cut out that flower to make it a little bit bigger, but then there was all that white around it, so I had to do something about that. Since this paper has little specks of blue, I thought I would use some blue accents, so I chose this little stamp from the Eastern Beauty and this is an older set just to add some blue to that and the way that I colored that um, this is the the stamp I used markers I colored the different colors with markers and then I stamped it and it came out kind of light so I had to once I uh, was done with it I went over it with the marker and just touched them up a little bit more and then I added some blue accents to go with that and it was just experimental I, I mean, this is not my favorite flower I have rarely used that I mostly bought this set because I like that and I've used that quite a bit that's been a really nice uh, design I've used it quite a bit it's been one of my favorites so sometimes I will go to older sets to create cards. Here is another card that I created, another pop-up design. This was one of the first sets that I purchased a few years ago. And one day I just sat down and cut out a bunch of uh, paper, try, experimented with different inks, and then I sometimes would go in with the markers and touch them up a little bit and layer them to to a set with this card i was just trying to coordinate the sort of peachy tones and pink tones so i added two flowers and that set came from this stamping set 
and I do have a cutout for this. Actually, it's wise to get the cut, the die cut. Actually, it's not a die cut. It's a punch. And I haven't, I mean, I did make a whole bunch of flowers. Um, one day I just sit down when I get a new tool, I just sit down and I play, play with inks, play with papers and just cut a bunch out and, and then just mess around with it and see what different designs I can make. Today though, as I was using it and cutting it, my paper was getting caught up in there and it's not working that great. And I was like, well, I used it a lot and one that one day um, and made a whole bunch of flowers, but now it's not working so well. I do prefer the die cuts. Um, here's, this is what one flower looks like by itself. And here, this is two layers, just sort of offset them. They're only glued in the center. You can even curl the edges and give them a little bit more dimension if you want. So I just make a bunch of flowers and try different colors and I just play with it to see what color combinations look good and I save them in a box. And I often do that. I will make a bunch of flowers. Like here's here's the rose. I just experimented with different colors and just make a bunch of flowers so that when I want to make a card, I already have some flowers made up. Here I have a whole bunch of cards that I made. I just want to pull out some of those ones that I use the big roses on. Like here's here's a card. I cut out a bunch of leaves. Also, I try them in different colors. Let's see if I can find another different design. Here's another one where I have the, the big rose. And here's another one. And it has a big rose on it. I, I like to mix mix and match different um, stamp sets or different die cuts to create my own designs. I just went crazy one with, with all of these and I and I made like a hundred cards of different uh, occasions. Yeah, I do use these sometimes but I'm just not too fond of that. Sometimes you buy things and you're like, ah, I don't like it. These are some, I was playing with magnolia and teacups, so I kind of combine from different sets. This is just my stash of cards. So I, I keep this box with uh, designs already made. I even have some of the Eastern Beauty medallions. They're already made. I don't usually, I don't use these very much. Um, I made them, I made a bunch, but I haven't used them. But this is, this is just a box where I put all those fun little things that I make and save them for when I do another card. So as I was thinking about this pop-up design, I just grabbed some papers and started cutting them out and I created a bunch of basic templates and it, so I got them prepared and then I went looking through all of my stuff to find out what I could use. I know I had lots of flowers. Um, I've already shown you this one. This is a beautiful bunch. This is an older stamp. I don't even know if it's available anymore. Um, this is a wild rose and I love this one. This is really, really pretty rose. Um, I've used it a lot. Um, th I thought this flower might be a good one. You could probably combine the two flowers even and make an arrangement, maybe add a few leaves. I haven't done that yet, but I think that could work. I only ink this, the flower part. And I thought this one might work. It's a little bit small, but you could do like a bouquet. You could do several of, of you could make a grouping of this and that might be good for that project. Um, here's another one, the, uh, what I love, the, um, I think it's supposed to look like a hydrangea flower, um, but that could be, it, it, it is a little bit small, so, but you could do a grouping, like you could do pink and, uh, sort of a purple and a pinkish purple, like a plum color, and you can make an arrangement of three flowers with that, and I probably will try that. This one, 
was another one I got at a bargain. I probably only paid a dollar for it. And it's an old stamp, so you can't get it anymore. But I like this flower. I, I really bought this because I like that. I love swirls. But this has this, and it's a little small for that project. So what I did was I created a groupie. I covered up part of the stamp when I when I printed it, and then I, I printed another one on top of it, and then I had a space. I didn't like that space, so I kind of covered up these two parts, and I printed this top part, and then I just filled it in with markers to make it blend. And then I did one flower by itself, and this one is, those are glued down. That's all one piece. The leaves are, are underneath, and then this is, is with a um, dimensional, so it's slightly raised because it's in front, so I have the whole flower there. So I took this small stamp and created a larger um, arrangement that fit. And what I got looking at, I said, well, this is like the color is the same as that, so it needs a little bit more contrast. I like the green, so I decided to cut out a, a doily, and this was after the fact. And then I used my oval cutter and just cut off part of it so that I could just put the doily on like that to give just a little bit of extra. Uh, and this card, I feel like it's not complete. I used the small flower for inside and colored it with markers. I think I used two different markers to color this. Oh, you know what I should do? I really should, and I meant to do this. I really should come in and, and put yellow on all of these tips. I was careful not to not to color that I left them white, so that way I could come in and, and add the yellow, because that will just add a little bit more touch to it. And I'm, I may add some other embellishments to this card once I figure out exactly what I'm going to do with it. There, Add, adding those little yellow embellishments helps. Okay, I have a few more to show you. Well, I took this design. This is the rose, and this one I cut out a purple doily to kind of pull together the pink and the purple. And I wish at this time that I didn't put that white in the center. Like I made this template. Next time I do this, I won't put that white in the center unless I absolutely need it. Now for this card, it works. It, it works for that. Um, for this card, it, it works. Um, but for this card, I really didn't need that white. That's just unnecessary paper. And this one, I, I didn't like the white. I, I wanted to rip it off, but it was already glued on. So what I did is I expanded the flower by putting a purple doily underneath so that way I could combine the purple and the pink. And I think this came from a different set. It might be the tea set, I'm not sure. Got two more to show you. Kitty cats, my granddaughter loves cats. As a matter of fact, she's got two cats that are now expecting kittens. And her birthday is coming up this summer. So I was thinking of the cats. Now the cats are kind of small. So I made a grouping of the cats. Now here, I, the white, I actually colored it with markers up and down so it looks like grass. The um, I should show you the stamp set on that one. This is the stamp set, Pretty Kitty. And it has all these adorable, cute little kittens. And I thought, when I saw this, I said, though, that would be great for my granddaughters. Well, I have two granddaughters who likes cats. So I colored them with markers. Uh, this one, yeah, I used to, I might have used, sometimes I use color pencil. This, yeah, that light shading is color pencil. Sometimes I'll, I'll do a combination of color pencil and, and markers. And I... I don't know if you can tell the base of that because this right here I've filled it in so that, that that's green grass underneath because I wanted that kitty to be white so then I I don't I don't have the punch 
um, I don't have the die cuts to go with the cat kitty, so I have to hand cut them with scissors. So it's very necessary to have a good pair of sharp pointed scissors that are comfortable for your hands. Don't use the little kitty scissors because these are very hard on your hands. Use some nice scissors with a sharp point. And then I added cats inside. And so I'm, uh, it, this card's already finished. And so I thought it would it look like a party because she's, she's got a bunch of cats at her house. And she's got more cats coming and so do I. I've been taking care of a stray cat in my backyard and she's a feral cat and I have not been able to catch her. So she's pregnant. So I'm gonna have kittens too. Okay, one more. I, I looked at my tea set. I love tea. And I thought, oh, the teapot. I could make that fit. It kind of comes out just a tiny bit. I'll just make sure my envelope is big enough to fit that in. And this does kind of get in the way. And it's, I've got, I had these um, that I bought probably when they were on clearance. I like to shop clearance. And I thought it would be cool for it to look like it was sort of tipping. And you have the teacup inside. And this card says, love is a warm cup of tea. Let's get together. This would be a great card to give to a friend that you would like to spend time with. So just using what I have to create my own designs from the tools that I have without spending extra money, without buying the coolest, latest, newest stamp set or the latest coolest, newest die cuts. Um, use what you have on hand and just add a little creativity and imagination. So I just kind of went on a binge and made a stack of cards all with the same kind of design. And probably they're gonna wind up being birthday cards. Uh, I usually don't put the greeting in until I know who the card is for so that I can make sure that it's personalized for that person. So I hope you find this video useful and don't be discouraged. If there's a will, there's a way. Don't let somebody stop you. Don't let, you know, just because everybody's doing all the, the hottest, newest, greatest thing, you can learn from them. I watch them and I look at their, their marvelous shop and think, ah, oh, I'm envious. I wish I had a room like that. We don't have to have what everybody else has. Well, I hope you found some tips in this video to encourage you. And I hope that you're not discouraged and you don't let what everybody else is doing bring you down. You can make the most of what you do. I mean, isn't the goal to make a great card, to bring a smile to somebody's face? We don't, they're not going to know that you used an, a, a stamp that's like six years old or a die cut that came off of Amazon that you paid two dollars for. So it really doesn't matter, okay? Think about the reason you're making the card. To bring a smile to somebody's face, to cheer someone up, to encourage someone. Don't let what everybody else is all in a fad about discourage you. Continue making cards. Just use a little creativity. If there's a problem, there's always a way to find a solution to figure it out. That's what I do. I work with what I have and I try to make the most of it. So I hope you found this video helpful. My YouTube channel is kind of all over the place. I'm sort of a free range chicken. I just kind of go wherever I wherever the creative juices take me. But mostly I like to make baskets and do art. And I've got some costumes that are in the works. So who knows what my next YouTube video will be about. But I do try to organize my videos according to the subject content. I have a, a playlist on just card making. I have a playlist on basket making. I have a playlist on gardening, I think. I have a playlist on chickens. I have a playlist on wedding planning. I have a playlist on crafts, which includes my sock bunny um, creations. So 
I try to keep my videos organized even though my channel is kind of all over the place and you never know what my next video I don't even know what my next video will be but if you found this video helpful and useful please hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up because that helps my algorithms since my algorithms aren't you know a plus because I don't stick to one topic I'm kind of all over the place. So it will help me if you give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.